I want to begin with the Deshaun Watson implosion that is going on right now in Houston. And I know we got a lot of people listening to me right now in Houston, Texas, and they are saying to themselves, my goodness, we started off 2021 losing James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets. Harden just flat out decided, I'm done with Houston. By the way, he's about to open a restaurant in Houston that might be the worst timing for a restaurant of all time. Just tossing it out there. James, when are you opening your restaurant? In the middle of a COVID pandemic. Also, after I just pieced out to the entire city of Houston, this is maybe the biggest restaurant disaster of all time. There's no way this restaurant is going to succeed. I hope that James Harden put his own money in there instead of business partners putting money in thinking, hey, there's no way we could lose money here. We're in Houston and James Harden is the namesake of the restaurant. Because, I'm sorry, there's probably a business partner right now waking up, putting on Sports Talk Radio like, bro, you had to start this way? Because I'll tell you, I've been there. I told my wife when we started a bar in downtown Broadway in Nashville, we bought the building, everything else, eventually it's going to be fine. But I said, how is a business on downtown Broadway which is basically like the Vegas Strip if you haven't been there before. How is a bar on Broadway in Nashville ever not going to do well? Well, turns out there could be a pandemic. So long-range plan might be good, at least for my bar on Broadway in downtown Nashville. That restaurant in Houston, named after James Harden, opening during a pandemic, I wouldn't want to have stock in that one. In fact, I'm kind of surprised I don't have stock in that one. But big picture here. I feel like the media and everybody talking about this Deshaun Watson story is totally whiffing on this. And they are buying into the idea that the Houston Texans are an atrocious franchise. And I think that's because the Texans don't get a lot of attention. The Dallas Cowboys soak up all of the Texas media marketplace. The NFC East in general. The Texans are always playing against the Colts and the Titans and the Jags. The AFC South doesn't have a lot of sizzle without Peyton Manning in it. And as a result, or Andrew Luck for that matter, as a result, there's not a lot of people out there like, you know who I have super strong opinions about? Phillip Rivers and Jacoby Brissett. You know who I really would just go to the mat on? Ryan Tannehill and Marcus Mariota. You know who I love? Minshew, uh, Gardner Minshew, and, uh, and, and, and the long neck dude whose name I can't even remember, Mike Glennon. Nobody's like, oh my God, I got to talk about all these dudes all the time. Now, Derrick Henry and Deshaun Watson obviously are the sizzle in the AFC South stake. But I feel like a lot of people have missed what is going on in Houston in the grand scheme of things. This is not a bad job. This is not an awful franchise. I feel like many people out there are just buying into the hype because they're social media losers and they see an athlete upset, and they immediately think, oh, things must be a disaster there. Guys, in the last decade, the Houston Texans have been to the playoffs six times. They have won four playoff games. If this were Matthew Stafford, and he were like, I'm done with the Lions, or if it were Barry Sanders, or if it were Calvin Johnson, and they're like, this organization is toxic, nobody can win here, I'd be like, you know what, he's got a point. They've won one playoff game since 1957. Sorry, Lions fans, to drag you in and just throw an elbow on you. They've won one playoff game since 1957. If you are a Lions player and you are utterly defeated by the organization and the choices that they have made, I understand why you want to be gone. But we're talking about the Houston Texans, six out of the last 10 years having been in the playoffs and winning four playoff games in the past decade. Now, I'm not defending... Bill O'Brien's decision to trade away DeAndre Hopkins. Certainly it hasn't worked out well that he get what he gave up to go get Laramie Tunsil. I don't think anybody would have said, oh, Laramie Tunsil's worth the number three overall pick. But what he was trying to do was acknowledge that he had a franchise quarterback and that he wanted to be able to protect him and he needed a franchise left tackle and he knew they didn't have one in Houston and he paid the price to do it. And he thought that DeAndre Hopkins was a declining asset. Maybe he has a couple of good years left. Maybe he's got three or four good years left. He could certainly be wrong. 
And I think you could certainly criticize what he got in exchange for DeAndre Hopkins. But you shouldn't cancel out a decade's worth of success with two bad trades. Jadavion Clowney really didn't have much left. J.J. Watt, really, I don't think I love J.J. Watt. I think he's been a tremendous asset to the city of Houston. I think he has been a fantastic uh, voice for athletics in general in that region, whether it was with hurricanes, whether it was with COVID issues, whether it's just trying to uplift the community in general. I think he's done a fantastic job. But he's on the back nine of his career. And so, to me, I think there is equal opportunity wrongdoing here in the way that the Deshaun Watson relationship has got out of kilter. But I think a lot of people are missing a level of success that has existed in Houston that isn't getting enough attention. This is not a failing organization. This is not the Detroit Lions. This is not a team that has to go out for a Hail Mary and desperately hope that they're going to find somebody who's been successful. In general, they have won a lot of games. They've advanced to the playoffs. Yes, they've never gotten to the AFC Championship game, but they've been in the divisional round of the playoffs. Heck, they were up 24 to nothing last year on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs with a chance to advance to the AFC Championship game. And here is my thing. Deshaun Watson is one of the 10 best quarterbacks in the NFL. If I owned the Houston Texans, I wouldn't trade him. I would sit down and figure out a way to make this work. And I would do that by sitting down and involving Deshaun Watson in some form or fashion with who the next head coach is going to be. Because we have seen time after time after time that the relationship that matters the most in the NFL is the quarterback and the head coach. Belichick and Brady, we'll talk about a little bit later. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. If you are simpatico, if you have a great relationship with your head coach, then you are going to win at an incredibly high level in the NFL if you're a successful quarterback. The Texans have done the hard part. Hard part. They've got a successful quarterback. That is oftentimes hard to find. They've got a successful young quarterback. The only reason to trade Deshaun Watson if you are the Houston Texans because somebody comes to you with such an unbelievable offer that you can't say no to it. I always say, everything that I have that is a possession is in theory for sale. I love my house. We have been here for six years. I think it's a fantastic neighborhood. I love everything about it. I've got my home television studio. I've got my home radio studio. I like my neighbors, my kids, love everything about it. If you offered me a million dollars more than what my house is worth, I would probably move because I would say, well, they're way overpaying. We can find a new place with the money that we are taking that's better than this one. I don't want to sell, but that's what capitalism is. If somebody offers you more for an asset, and you believe that you can take advantage of that offer and find yourself in a better footing than you otherwise would, then you do it. Now, it might be different if I were 80 years old, and I was like, no, 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 I've lived my whole life. I never want to move again. That's a frustrating thing. A million extra dollars to me right now doesn't mean anything. I understand that if you're an old guy. But if you're the Houston Texans, you don't have an old quarterback. You've got a guy that's just starting to come into his full fruition of talent. Now, if the Miami Dolphins got on the phone with me and they said, hey, we'll give you Tua and we'll give you the overall number three pick or we'll give you the overall number three pick and another couple of assets on this team right now because we think Deshaun Watson is that good, I might be willing to make that trade because you might like Justin Fields or you might like Zach Wilson. Or you might think you could put piece together some things and end up going after the Jags number one overall pick. I don't know. I'm open to making a trade, but this idea that Deshaun Watson has to get out of Houston because the franchise has not been successful enough is one of the craziest arguments that I have seen in a long time. And I don't know whether people are just not paying attention, whether they're not looking at the data. I mean, six trips to the playoffs in the past 10 years with four playoff wins 
I mean, the Dallas Cowboys would kill for that. The Dallas Cowboys, Tom Brady in year one in the NFC got into the NFC championship game. I don't think, Dub, look it up. I don't think the Cowboys have been there since 1995. The Cowboys have barely won a playoff game in the last 25 years. I know they get a lot more attention than the Houston Texans, but nobody out there would be like, man, the Cowboys are a broken organization. Look at some of the bad contracts they've signed. Look at some of the bad choices they've made. Nobody out there would just be like, oh, this is a disaster. They're absolutely atrocious. Yet the Cowboys haven't been winning playoff games hardly at all. What have they won? Three playoff games in the last 25 years? Look that up too if you would, Dub. The Texans have won four this decade. The Cowboys have barely won in 25 years. They've won three playoff games since 1996. And nobody's out there like, oh, you got to get out of the Dallas Cowboy organization while you can They are failures. You got no chance at success. If we're talking about state of Texas NFL franchises that have consistently failed and underperformed and have a broken culture, the one we should be talking about is the Dallas Cowboys, not the Houston Texans. And so I think because the Houston Texans are a little bit under the radar, it's easy to to go ahead and rip on them. And you could say, well, now they're set to be awful because they don't have picks in the first and second round this year, and what, but they still have a franchise quarterback. The reason why you give a franchise quarterback a lot of money is to guarantee that you never fall that far off the radar. It might take a couple of years for the Houston Texans to get back to a high level, but look at Drew Brees' history. The Saints were bad for several years before they got good again after they won the Super Bowl. Most teams are not Tom Brady or Peyton Manning led where you can just write them into the playoffs every single year. That's a rarity. Even really good quarterbacks have ups and downs. Some years where things just don't come together, the injuries add up, everything doesn't work in their favor. Think about how often that happens even for Hall of Fame level quarterbacks. Drew Brees went 7-9 and in back-to-back years after he won the Super Bowl. That didn't mean the New Orleans Saints were a broken organization. He didn't demand a trade. I just, I have so many thoughts about this Deshaun Watson issue, and I feel like it's being talked about and discussed in such an inferior and unintelligent manner in the larger sports media universe. There also aren't a lot of precedents for this Deshaun Watson situation. There are lots of times where NBA stars demand trades. There are very few involving a quarterback demanding a trade. Now, there are some before the draft. Eli Manning wouldn't play for the San Diego Chargers at the time. John John Elway wouldn't play for, I think it was the Baltimore Colts at the time. And there are some times in the draft where guys say, hey, I don't want to go there. Sort of the whisper report. And certainly we've seen Jalen Ramsey get fed up with the Jags and demand to be traded. And we have seen Antonio Brown get fed up with the Pittsburgh Steelers and then with the Oakland Raiders and demand to get traded. But we really haven't seen a quarterback get have an implosion like this where everybody is so angry. Now, we may see it in Philadelphia. Carson Wentz seems unhappy with the Eagles, but that really is based on the way he's playing, not based on necessarily the organizational relationship in general, although it's part of it. Deshaun Watson is playing an electric brand of football. I wouldn't trade him if I'm the Texans unless I get an overwhelming offer. I don't believe he's going to sit out for a year. We've never seen a quarterback do it. I kind of wish that the storyline would continue to build because I think it's entertaining, but I don't think Deshaun Watson is the kind of guy who's willing to sit out for a year. And I also don't know how you get top value if you are the Texans And Deshaun Watson is basically saying, hey, I'm not going to play with you anymore. Because if you're trading for him, you say, well, what are the Texans going to do otherwise? I'm not going to give top value for him. This story, put a pin in it. I don't know that it's going away. And I'm going to be following it aggressively because I think it's really a situation almost without precedent in the NFL right now. And I just think right now what needs to happen 
is the owner, Cal McNair, needs to sit down face-to-face with his franchise quarterback, Deshaun Watson, and they need to have a conversation about what's going awry. What is not working in this relationship? And I think Deshaun Watson, if I owned the Houston Texans, what I would do is I would sit down at a table with Deshaun Watson and I would say, here are the head coaches I am thinking about hiring. These are the guys that have come recommended to me. What do you think of these guys? Would you like to go out to dinner with me, with these guys, and talk about them and think about how you might have the best relationships? A little bit like The Bachelor, which, yes, I am watching now that college football is over and now that the NFL is almost over. Sat down, watched it with my wife last night. It's fabulous. Probably talk about it a little bit with Petros. Who's going to get the rose for the Houston Texans? I would give the rose to Deshaun Watson. I would keep a rose if I were the owner. I would find the bachelor that we like the best to be the head football coach of the Houston Texans. I would make sure Deshaun Watson was happy. I would make sure that I was happy. And we would ride off happily ever after into the sunset and hopefully head to Super Bowls. But this seems like something that is so incredibly easy to rectify. You've got a star quarterback. The relationship that matters the most for the star quarterback is with his head coach. Let's find a head coach that he wants to work with that is a top candidate. Let him be involved in this choice. If that coach doesn't work out, you have at least shown the star quarterback how much you value his judgment. And then you guys can go back to the drawing board in three years because that's about how long it takes to figure out whether or not a guy is the right guy. 